We're going to take a look at the two most popular vacuum pumps offered to the users by the Harvest Right freeze dryer. We have the premium pump on the left, which is a rotary vane pump, and we have a scroll vacuum pump, which is an oilless vacuum pump. Both of these are used by Harvest Right freeze dryers, and we're going to review the differences, the pros and cons of each pump. First of all, it should be said and it should be clear that Harvest Right freeze dryers abuse their vacuum pumps, regardless if, if it's a rotary vane pump or a scroll oilless pump. Vacuum pumps used by Harvest Right freeze dryers are abused for a simple reason. Moisture from the freeze drying process by its nature is acidic and enters the vacuum pump and can cause all kinds of problems leading to corrosion and part failure. The first issue to take a look at with the scroll pump is the number of bearings that it requires to operate. There are 12 bearings, seven seals, a large O-ring, and 10 feet of scroll gasket material. Many of these bearings require a press to remove and install them. If found domestically, the replacement cost for these bearings and seals is around $729. If obtained overseas from China from the original manufacturer, the cost is around $250. When compared to the premium pump, the parts are more simplistic. There's one O-ring, two seals, one bushing, there are no bearings in the premium pump, one gasket, a secondary vein, and a primary vein. These are the parts within the premium pump. I'd like to show you a piece of rebar. Nothing is spectacular about it. It's just a piece of rusty number four rebar, which is to say it's a half inch in diameter. The rust on this is caused from being left outside in the weather. The point is, it's rusty. I took this rebar, was set inside the bucket that I used to receive the thawed ice water from my freeze dryer. Here's my rebar, and in it goes for the next 10 days. Comes back out. If I can show you this particular point right about here, this part of the rebar was sitting above the water this part of the rebar and further down was submerged in the water. Where it was submerged in the water is now nice and clean. This basically demonstrates and has been measured that the water coming out of the freeze dryer is acidic in nature and has the power to remove iron oxide and rust to make it absolutely clean. This is the point I'm trying to make about freeze dryers. This moisture, which is produced by sublimation, is sucked into the vacuum pump for the freeze dryer. And due to the acidity of the moisture, this corrosive action can also affect the internal parts of a vacuum pump. Harvest Wright took a commercial freeze dryer and shrank it down to size. Harvest Wright was successful in coming up with the first countertop freeze dryer. The freeze drying unit, along with its companion external vacuum pump, constitutes the Harvest Right freeze dryer. Harvest Right overlooked a major component in the development of their freeze dryer, and that was a $7,400 cold trap. Now, really, Harvest Right didn't overlook the cold trap, it was incorporated into the chamber of the freeze dryer. The cold trap freezes and stops all water vapor from entering the vacuum pump. The absence of a cold trap does allow some water vapor to enter the vacuum pump. See that hole right there? That is the flaw of the Harvest Right freeze dryer. Now, it's really not a flaw, but during operation, this chamber wall becomes extremely cold, around minus 40. And as the moisture comes out of the food through sublimation, it freezes to this chamber wall. But some moisture can sneak out through that hole 
and go into the pump. That moisture can travel back to the vacuum pump and corrode some of the parts internally. And that's why it's important to have a vacuum pump that has oil. Oil protects the surfaces to prevent corrosion. In the, in the oil-free pumps, you don't have that protection. Well, let me tell you how passionate I am about this subject. Oil is so important to the life of a vacuum pump. Oil promotes lubrication, it removes heat, and most of all, it covers the internal workings, these highly machined parts in a film of oil and protects it from moisture and from any acidic action. They might ask, well, what do I do if I have an oilless vacuum pump? Well, continue to use it, but I would monitor it closely and you might actually have to tear it down from time to time to perhaps hand lubricate some of the internal parts and then inspect some of the bearings and the other components. If you have a chance to return to a regular vacuum pump, I'd do so. The premium pump is a great pump to have. It's simplistic by nature and it provides everything you need to successfully freeze dry. If you're concerned about changing oil, well, is that something you're going to have to get over with? An oil change only takes two or three minutes, and it's very simple. Harvest Right recommends changing the oil occasionally. I change the oil after every batch, and I just had a batch just finished just now, so this pump is nice and warm. So we're going to change the oil and see how long it takes. We're going to tip the pump forward with a block of wood. Close the valve, remove the block of wood. I have my next batch of oil all measured out. Oil change in less than two minutes. Anyway, changing the oil is simple. It's really not complicated. Perhaps Harvest Right needs to take a page from the Henry Ford playbook. Henry Ford said any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants as long as it's black. And perhaps Harvest Right should have the same policy. Any customer can have any vacuum pump as long as it's a premium pump. Giving a customer option confuses the customer. Harvest Right should have one vacuum pump and one vacuum pump only, and it should be the premium pump. Selling an oilless vacuum pump is a bad idea.